Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Saturday, January 23rd, 2021. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, BoxRec, that's B-O-X-R-E-C, dot com, is one of my favorite sites. Love the site. Check it several times a week. But its pound-for-pound -pound rankings are curious, right? At what point do we start questioning the site's formula? I understand they punch in a lot of data and that it's not really a judgment call. They're going by the numbers. But let's ask a few basic questions. Are there really 16 better fighters in the sport than unbeaten former undisputed cruiserweight champion Alexander Usyk? Right, the site has him at number 17, folks. Can you close your eyes and name 16 guys who are better than a currently unbeaten former undisputed champion. Whatever happened the last fight, are there really 24 better fighters? 24, two dozen better fighters in the sport than Lomachenko. Let's ask more foundational questions here. Focusing on the light heavyweight division. How is Kovalev, who got beaten by Alvarez, right, Elidur Alvarez, who got beaten by Andre Ward, right, stopped by Ward, stopped by Alvarez, and who got stopped by Canelo, a fighter who wasn't even in his weight class, and who recently failed a synthetic testosterone PED test. Look, I understand if someone fails because they have caffeine in their system. I understand if someone failed because they were around some people who were smoking cannabis and the THC showed up in their system. At least that's the story they're going to go with, as you could imagine. But how do you fail a synthetic testosterone test? Right? I mean, that implies a level of juicing that takes effort. That's not, oh, I had one Mountain Dew too many. Or, you know, maybe I shouldn't hang around my friend Joe when he's blazing. Right? No, no. When you're failing a test for synthetic testosterone, <laughs> something is wrong. Well, just understand that Kovalev somehow is rated ahead of Usyk, who's currently unbeaten, who's the former undisputed. <laughs> Kovalev's rated ahead of him. Kovalev is rated ahead of Lobachenko, right? Give me a break. Lobachenko lost to Teofimo Lopez, a great fighter. Uh, he shouldn't have guys like Kovalev rated ahead of him. I mean, that's crazy. So let me just say, I have a lot of respect for Box Rec. I know many of you do too, uh, but it's ratings like these that keep sites like mine in business. Uh, I personally don't think I'm saying anything that's special here, right? I'm just talking common sense. It's just that the world is such that Kovalev is rated ahead of Usyk, right, <laughs> on some sites. Common sense somehow stands out in the world of boxing. That's the sport. Well, let's continue our focus on the light heavyweight division. In about three weeks, February the 13th, 2021, from Las Vegas, we're going to have the WBO light heavyweight title fight. And let me just say, this fight, I want people to focus on this division because it's about more than Kovalev, right? You have Arthur Berturbiov, unbeaten champion. You have Dmitry Bivol, unbeaten champion. You have high action fighters in the division. Now, if you're looking for action, if you're looking for a fight where just where the guys are in the ring is going to tell you a lot of the story, 
you need to look at this title fight between Joe Smith, who has one of boxing's best right hands. Right? The sport has a few A-plus punches. Deontay Wilder's straight right hand is among them. Manny Pacquiao's straight left hand is among them. This guy, Joe Smith's right hand, is among them, in my opinion. This is the guy who knocked Bernard Hopkins out of the ring. And he's going up against Maxim Vlasov, who's a two-and-a-half-to-one underdog. Two and a half to one underdog. But this guy's been on my radar for a while. Right? Because this is the gambler's dream. He's only lost to Gilberto Ramirez, another guy on my radar. One of the most underrated guys in the sport. Right? Vlasov lost to Gilberto Ramirez. He lost to Christoph Glowacki, who, of course, in the past was the WBO champion, cruiserweight champion. He beat Steve Cunningham. He's beaten Marco Huck, among others. And, of course, Vlasov lost to Ike Chalemba. Right? A difficult KG matchup. But importantly, on the Vlasov resume, you're going to notice that although he's fighting world-class fighters, in my opinion, he's never been knocked out. He's been knocked down. He's never been knocked out. Now understand, Joe Smith, great right hand. Has a very good left hook too. But if you get Smith, not over by the side of the ring where he finishes guys, right? Knocks Hall of Famers like Hopkins out the ring. But if you could get him in the middle of the ring, Right? You have a shot at outboxing him. Understand, Joe Smith was outboxed by Dimitri Bivol, who we mentioned before, by Sullivan Barrera. Quite frankly, he was having problems with an older Bernard Hopkins before ending that fight by stoppage. Joe Smith is that puncher who comes in to KO you but who can be outboxed. Now, let me just say that Smith will let his hands go. He's offensively minded. He's not defensively blessed. You know he wants to be the pursuer. You understand that. Because his punches are a little wide at times, a good counterpuncher can get inside his punches. But it takes athleticism. You have to bob and weave and avoid getting hit with Smith's right hand. And then get close enough to Smith where when he throws wide punches, you make him pay. But because Smith, even with the great right hand, is two-handed, right? Great left hook. You have to make sure that as you're countering him, you're aware of defense. Now, as I've long said, the daredevils in the sport, it's the difference between daredevil, Ray Leonard, and pot shotter, Floyd Mayweather, right? The daredevils in the sport are the combination punchers, right? When the bullet started fire, uh, flying, and Anthony Joshua was in the pocket against combination puncher Andy Ruiz. Even against one of the biggest punchers in the heavyweight division, Ruiz was at peace. That's the moment combination punchers wish for. Right? They think they're going to get there first. They want to start a sequence where they're hitting you with multiple shots. Right? A pot shotter's thinking defense. It's always on their mind. Right? They hit you. They wonder what's coming back. They cover up. A combination puncher is like someone who jumps out of planes. They hit you. They're thinking about their next punch. They're thinking, you know what? 
if I'm at the right angle and I can just get off the first punch of this sequence, I can then empty the gun and end the fight right here. Right? The good combination punchers, to facilitate that risk-taking, have something else going for them. With Andy Ruiz, it is, still today, the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Right? I don't care what Andy weighs. I know he has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Right? With Ray Leonard, it was fast hands and a great upper body. With Vlasov, it's a great upper body and a way to move. Right? It's an upper body married with movement. It's as high risk as can be. In other words, his hands aren't up. Right? When the bullets start flying, this is a guy who drops his hands and starts relying on his reflexes. It's even more high risk because he's in his 30s and he's fighting a guy with one-punch knockout power. As I said, that Joe Smith right hand is one of the best punches in boxing. And he can loop it. So, if you're looking for action, you're not going to find a better fight than this. Right? You should frame this fight. I believe it's going to be all over the net as soon as it ends. Right? Both of these guys have been around. Both of these guys have fought for world titles. Think about it. But yet the public doesn't seem to realize how action-packed this fight is going to be. Let's also say this too. Smith's right hand, I don't need to know anything about boxing. Right? It's like watching a Wilder fight, as I said earlier. His right hand is so dramatic that you are watching the fight you see him land it, you see the other guy hit the canvas, you say, wow, this dude hits hard. But what I want people to do is to look at the crafty veteran Maxim Vlasov's. We'll call it a sneaky right hand. Right, this is the kind of right hand where you're watching the fight. He's a combination puncher. He throws it the first time. You notice it stands up the opponent. You notice in the opponent's eyes, the opponent realizes something different has happened. Then you notice Vlasov will throw it again. He'll slip it in. But he'll do it in a combination. It's tucked. It's not obvious. Doesn't look like he's headhunting, but yet he is headhunting. Vlasov's right hand has pop. If Joe Smith can't match him in hand speed, if Vlasov somehow is able to stay off the ropes and keep this in the middle of the ring, if he's able to slip Smith's bigger shots by bobbing and weaving while in the pocket, understand, combination puncher Vlasov, just like Andy Ruiz, wants a pocket. They want the gun fight because they think they're the quicker draw than you. They think that they're the only ones thinking past the first punch of a combination. I view Vlasov here as a live dog. The bet I'm recommending, and hey, we take risks on this site. It's gambling. Right? It's gambling. It's not calling fights. It's taking risk on fights. Understand the risk involved here. I can't believe Lassoff, who's never been stopped, who's only lost to crafty fighters in my eyes. I can't believe he's a 5-2 to two underdog. The bet I'm recommending here is the underdog to win the fight. The casino's offering leverage. Hey, hey, player over here. I'll, I'll take some of the leverage. But you need to hedge it against Joe Smith by KO because understand every minute of this fight, and I mean every minute of this fight, 
there's going to be the threat of a Joe Smith KO. And you're dealing with a combination puncher who's going to be taking risks defensively. There are possible scenarios here. Joe Smith comes in, lands a few right hands, blasts off, dazed and confused, finds himself up on the ropes, and gets stopped. I'm banking on a different scenario. One where not a fight, but a boxing match breaks out. Where Vlasov's in the middle of the ring and Joe Smith is thinking, man, this dude's moving his upper body. This guy's moving away from my right hand and he has my left hook blocked. And of course, this damn sneaky right hand of his has me off balance, unable to set my feet, which Joe Smith likes to do, before throwing bombs. Also, rather than move away, Vlasov is likely to circle and move to Joe Smith, keeping a slugger who likes to pace himself working. Right? Understand, too, Bernard Hopkins was very much in his fight against Joe Smith before getting stopped. Right? If you get to the sixth or seventh rounds. And Vlasov, as I suspect, is out boxing Joe Smith. An underdog who's ahead, who is in his 30s, who's fought his whole life for another shot at the title, who's six rounds away, six rounds away, from the light heavyweight WBO championship is going to be inspired, right? Understand, too, I feel Vlasov moves great laterally, right? Focus on the movement in this fight. I also feel Vlasov, again, I'm talking about the two and a half to one underdog, is one of boxing's better athletes. He's a great athlete. So you're going to notice stamina. You're going to notice sharp reflexes. In other words, you know the kind of guy I'm talking about. Drops his hands, has his head like this behind his shoulder, and as the other guy throws, he's going to roll with the punch while setting up his own sneaky right hand. I believe Vlasov can do that all 12 rounds. All 12 rounds. His fight against Gilberto Ramirez was close. I believe Vlasov this time is going to try to leave no doubt. This is a great fight. What I'm trying to do is to set it up so that I win big. If Vlasov pulls off the upset. And that I get a small profit if Joe Smith wins by KO. But I need for you, the viewer to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if Joe Smith, who's already beaten people like Bernard Hopkins, and who's already fought Dimitri Bivol, who might be the best at light heavyweight, if Joe Smith wins a decision in Las Vegas, he's the American guy, you lose it all. I like the underdog here, Vlasov, to win at plus 250, hedged with Joe Smith by KO. That's how I see it. If you're a casual boxing fan and you want to wander into a division with some characters that somehow is getting ignored, right? Think about it. Kovalev has a belt. Beterviev has a belt. Bivol is one of the best athletes in the sport. He's unbeaten. He's more fluid. He might be better than the other two guys. He has a belt. Right? Then you have guys like Joe Smith and Vlasov. Folks, the light heavyweight division should be getting a lot more pub than it is. Right? The spotlight's been shining brightly on 147. And on 130 and 135, right? We need to look a little bit harder at 
and 168. We need to look a little bit harder at 175 and 154. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.